brought to you by the biggest real-time strategy game on a fully persistent MMO galaxy, Nova Saturno. Play against thousands of other players in an endless universe of galaxies where your strategic decisions have real consequences. You can help back Nova Saturno on Kickstarter or learn more at novasaturno.com. Hey guys, I'm Ryan, and Sony has fired back at Microsoft's Xbox One sales announcement with one of their own, that the PS4 sold 4.2 million units before the end of 2013. One million of those sales came in the first 24 hours the console was available on shelves in North America. And on December 3rd, Sony announced that they'd passed 2.1 million sales worldwide. In the following 25 days, they proceeded to double that number. Sony's Andrew House is understandably happy with the console's sales performance so far, saying, After a remarkable launch, we look forward to bringing even more exciting content and continuing to explore the power of the PS4 system by adding new features and services. Sony has also announced that the PS4 now accounts for 20% of all Twitch streams, up from 10% on December 10th, with 1.7 million total broadcasts streaming a cumulative 104 years of content so far. They've also announced that Gaikai, the cloud streaming service that they purchased in 2012, has become PlayStation Now, the service Sony will use to stream previous generation games to PS4, PS3, and Vita, as well as TV, smartphones, and tablets. The service isn't available yet, but most 2014 models of Sony's Bravia line of TVs will support it when it does launch. They're demonstrating the service at CES with major titles The Last of Us and Beyond Two Souls, and intend to launch a closed beta in the US later this month for a full release of the service in the middle of the year. Unfortunately, this good news doesn't apply to Europe. Sony isn't yet ready to discuss their launch plans for PAL regions. Sony's Fred Dutton explains, Europe is a considerably more complex region, with a huge number of different providers and varying connection speeds from country to country. The service, once it does become available, will be subscription-based, though those who don't intend to use it often will be able to rent titles for a one-off fee. Moving on to other CES news, Valve has unveiled their first-gen Steam Machine lineup of 13 different systems. In addition to the ones we reported yesterday, there are 10 new configurations for Valve's Linux-based SteamOS move to engage living room gamers in PC gaming. Falcon Northwest's Tiki Machine will range anywhere from $1799 to $6000 depending on your configuration with an NVIDIA GeForce GTX Titan graphics card, customizable CPU, and anywhere from 8 to 16 gigabytes of RAM and up to 6 terabytes of storage. Gigabyte's Brix Pro will have an Intel Iris Pro 5200 graphics card, Intel Core i7-4770R processor, 8GB of RAM, and a 1TB hard drive. Alternate will offer a $1,399 machine featuring a Gigabyte GTX 760 graphics card, Intel Core i5-4570 CPU, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 1 terabyte solid-state hybrid drive. iBuyPower, which was previously announced but not covered yesterday, will start at $499 and have a Radeon GCN graphics card, quad-core AMD or Intel processor, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and at least 500 gigabytes of storage. Material.net's machine will be priced at $1098 and come with an MSI GeForce GTX 760 OC graphics card, an Intel Core i5-440 CPU, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and a 1 terabyte SSHD. Origin PC's Kronos machine will be configurable up to two 6 gigabyte NVIDIA GeForce Titan graphics cards, a 3.9 to 4.6 gigahertz Intel Core i7-4770K CPU, and flexible RAM and hard drive options. The next spa will include an NVIDIA GT 760 graphics card, Intel Core i5 processor, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and 1 terabyte of hard drive space. Scans NC10 will have an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 765M graphics card, Intel Core i3-4000M CPU, 8GB of RAM, and a 500GB hard drive for $1,090. Webb Holland's machine will be $1,499 and contain an NVIDIA GT 780 graphics card, Intel Core i7-4771 processor, 16GB of RAM, and a 1TB solid-state hybrid drive. Sotax 599 machine will have an NVIDIA GeForce GTX graphics card and an Intel Core CPU, though the specifics on that haven't been disclosed yet. And while Alienware has announced that they are working on their own Steam machine, they haven't yet disclosed specs, beyond that it will use an Intel-based CPU and NVIDIA graphics card. Not to be left out, Razer has announced a new modular gaming PC concept codenamed Project Christine. This is anything but a living room PC and is designed with the hardcore PC gamer in mind. Every component used in the machine will be integrated into a metal pod that snaps into the tower itself. And each module will have active liquid cooling and noise cancellation. 
which Razer says will give them the ability to factory overclock components for better performance. The system will use PCI Express architecture to connect and sync the components, and the tower itself will have an LCD screen to provide maintenance, information, and component controls. No release date or pricing is available yet, though it could see a release sometime later this year. And given the revolutionary nature of the design, don't expect it to come cheap. And while all that hardware stuff is a lot of fun, we'd be remiss if we left out the biggest game announcement of the day. Sega has unveiled a new first-person survival horror title from Creative Assembly titled Alien Isolation, which will see you step into the shoes of Ellen Ripley's daughter Amanda 15 years after the events of Ridley Scott's 1979 film Alien from which the game draws deeply. It's making the game as much like that original experience of being focused on a single alien in a single environment and not being prepared to shoot it. It's that really close-up, personal, and connected experience with the alien, explains lead game designer Gary Knapper. The game will take place on a large trading station at the edge of space following the discovery of a flight recording from the Nostromo as you set out to investigate Ripley's disappearance. The game, which has been in development since 2011, is due out later this year on PS4, Xbox One, PS3, Xbox 360, and PC. In its current state, it's fully playable beginning to end, and the developers plan to use these final months to focus on polishing and balancing the game. And that's the biggest news today. After the poorly received Aliens Colonial Marines from Gearbox, are you looking forward to playing an Alien game that more closely follows the spirit of the classic film? Let us know in the comments below. Then check out roosterteeth.com tomorrow afternoon where we will live stream a new episode of The Patch just for our sponsors.